So, just as an introduction, endometrioma with proper studies affects 1 to 2 percent of reproductive age women, and about 20 to 40 percent of these women have an, at least an endometrioma. And these are the markers of ovarian reserve. Ovarian reserve is the reproductive potential, as per ASRM definition, expressed as a function of quantity and quality of the oocytes. But today, the, the speech is mostly focused on the quantitative aspect. And how can we evaluate quantitative ovarian reserve? We can, a commonly used good marker is until follicle count. Another systemic marker is serum antimullerian hormone levels. And the number of oocytes collected in a stimulated IVF cycles can also be used as a proxy because it's a different, it's, a, it's another definition of ovarian reserve. So I'll tackle, I'll handle each of these markers separately in a row. And if we assess ovarian reserve with antral follicle counts in the presence of an endometrioma to see whether the presence of an endometrioma per se affects ovarian reserve. There's a limited number of studies. There are only three, okay? And they're all retrospective. The first one is from Italy. What they did is they compared women with endometrioma, antral follicle counts of women with endometrioma with other infertility patients who didn't have an endometrioma. So actually, it's not the ideal comparison group because the control group may have decreased ovarian reserve as well. And what they found, the answer follicle count was similar. The second study is also an Italian study. The control group was, com was comprised of women with tubal factor infertility. Even though it sounds better, it's still not a healthy population. And the final study is from McGill. Benny is a friend of mine from Israel. What he did, he did is he compared the number of oocytes collected from the endometrioma containing ovary and the lateral healthy ovary, supposedly healthy ovary in women with unilateral endometriomas who were undergoing IVF. He found the number of eggs collected to be similar. When these were combined in a recent meta-analysis in human reproduction update, the conclusion was the, the presence of an endometrioma per se did not affect until follicle count. However, this is our study published in human reproduction in 2013. This wasn't included in the meta-analysis because the meta-analysis was concerned with IVF outcomes. So we didn't report IVF outcomes here. What we did was we compared the ovarian reserve markers in women with endometrioma versus healthy controls collected from nurses, medical students, and residents. So they weren't infertile or they didn't have a gynecological pathology, a proper healthy control group. And this was a prospective study. Then the women with endometriomas underwent surgery. We compared ovarian reserve markers before and after surgery. So it, that's why it's not included in the meta-analysis. But in my opinion, by the virtue of being a prospective study and including healthy controls, so it is the most proper assessment of effect of endometrioma on, on ovarian reserve. And what we found was in a similar age group, the controls were matched for age as the most important marker of ovarian reserve. The total antral follicle count was found to be decreased in the presence of an endometrioma. So that is the end of antral follicle count with endometrioma. The second marker is serum AMH levels. Again, there are a lim there's a limited number of studies. The first one is our study that I showed in the prior slide. We also compared AMH levels. And as compared to healthy women, we found the serum AMH level to be decreased. And in, in another study from a retrospective study from Korea, they compared serum AMH levels with women who had an endometrioma versus other patients from an infertility clinic. And in different age category groups, even when adjusted for age, they found women with endometrioma had significantly decreased antimullerian hormone levels, even as compared to other infertile women. And the other one is actually the Strolli paper is, is from France. It's Professor Chaperon's group. They, they keep a database. They, it's a surgical clinic. It's a, they, they, they deal with gynecological surgery. They accept patients who are referred for, referred for surgery. What they did is they retrospectively compared in their database women who were referred for endometrioma excision with other women who were referred for surgery for other benign gynecological conditions. So it's not exactly healthy controls. And what they found is statistically similar serum antimullerian hormone levels. But I have two issues. One is 
the 3.6 is the endometriomal group and 4.6 is the other pathology group. So there's actually a still clinically important difference. And the p-value is borderline at 0.06. But more importantly, as most endometriosis patients were referred for infertility care as well, women who were already diagnosed with decreased ovarian reserve may not have been referred for surgical excision in the first place, so the comparison could be biased. So I would rather trust the other two studies more as compared to this third one. And the final marker is the number of oocytes collected. There are, there are five studies reporting the number, comparing the number of oocytes collected from ovaries with endometriomas and women without endometriomas. So the difference is actually suggests when there's an endometrioma in place, you collect significantly less oocytes, even though the difference is clinically small. But more importantly, women with endometrioma are almost three times more likely to have their cycles canceled before oocyte collection. So the number of oocytes collected is a biased comparison again, and despite that bias, it's still significantly less, even though like half an oocyte in a cycle. So in my opinion, all three markers suggest endometrioma itself, the presence of an endometrioma itself, adversely affects ovarian reserve, and the women have decreased ovarian reserve. So here's the conclusion. Now, let's see what happens if you excise an endometrioma. First of, first of all, the indications for endometrioma excision are at best controversial, and we'll discuss it tomorrow again, yet it's a commonly undertaken operation. Again, let's look at the effect of endometrioma excision um, in order of until follicle count, AMH levels, and the number of oocytes collected. So this meta-analysis by Ludovico Muzi was published in Human Reproduction last year. What they did is they compiled studies which reported until follicle count before and after endometrioma excision. Prior to this meta-analysis, there were two other meta-analyses that reported AMH levels, which I'll come back, uh, which I'll, I'll progress in a minute. But what they said is, a serum AMH level is a systemic marker, but a woman may have a unilateral endometrioma. So basically looking at, looking at the actual follicle count in the operated ovary may, be a better, may, may better reflect the effect of surgery. And they concluded that overall, the actual follicle count wasn't different before and after surgery. And the, so they said, as, as assessed by actual follicle count, endometrioma excision doesn't adversely affect ovarian reserve. However, in a subgroup analysis, when you compare the operated ovary with the contralateral healthy ovary, contralateral healthy ovary seemed to have higher antral follicle count, which could be due to several reasons. I mean, better visibility, you know, not having decreased ovarian reserve in the first place. However, this meta-analysis was criticized by us and others for two important things. The first is, even though the idea was to assess a local marker rather than a systemic marker, they compiled all the antral follicle count, total antral follicle counts, even from women who had unilateral endometrioma. So basically, even if the unilateral endometrioma after the operation had decreased antral follicle count, the healthy ovary, as they have higher antral follicle count, may have obscured the differences statistically. Okay, so basically, that's one of the things. So when we compiled studies that exclusively compared unilateral endometriomas and the operated ovaries, you see there's still a strong trend suggesting that surgery further declines until follicle count. The second criticism was actually by a Brazilian group. They said in the same lines, until follicle count maybe is not that good of a marker especially in the presence of an endometrioma, because while the endometrioma is in place, it might have obscured sonographically visibility of adrenal follicles. So to document this clearly, they did a very nice study. They, they recruited 37 women with unilateral endometriomas who were undergoing IVF. So before starting the stimulation cycle, they counted until follicles in the endometrioma containing ovary and the contralateral ovary. And as consistent with the other studies I've shown, the endometrioma containing ovaries had significantly less antral follicle counts. But once they are stimulated, the antral follicles as they grow, most likely they become more visible. And they compared the number of oocytes collected from the healthy ovary and the endometrioma containing ovary. Similar to Benny's study that I showed in the first slide, they found the number of oocytes collected to be similar. 
And as an indicator of reliability of antral follicle count, they compare the difference between number of oocytes collected and in the antral follicle count prior to stimulation. And as expected, the healthy ovary had a higher difference, suggesting, I mean, as we all know, we don't get an egg from every antral follicle. So if you collect the same number of eggs from the prior antral follicle count, that means you're underestimating your antral follicle count before stimulation. So I would, in this case, kind of tend to disregard the antral follicle count as a proper marker of effect of surgery on ovarian reserve. And given the strong trend suggesting decreased antral follicle count after endometrioma excision in unilateral endometriomas, I would think it is further decreased after surgery. The second marker is AMH levels. As I said, there were already two published meta-analyses consistently as they already include the same studies suggesting that preoperative serum AMH levels are significantly higher than postoperative serum AMH levels as it's a systemic marker so it wouldn't be a, a, um, affected by visibility or so. But the only thing missing in this meta-analysis was most studies reported changes over a month or over three months. There was only one study reporting six or nine months follow-up. So after the publication of this paper, we did in our two hospitals at the American Hospital and at the Uludağ University, two prospective studies. The first one tab included only women with unilateral endometriomas because we usually do not operate on, we try to avoid operating on bilateral endometriomas. And what, what we found is both antral follicle count and serum H, AMH levels were immediately declined and this decline was persistent, they didn't recover over time. And in the other study, the one I showed in the first, the, in the, in the first slides, so we did a six-month follow-up for those women who underwent surgery. Some of them had unilateral, some of them had bilateral endometriomas. And again, we found serum AMH levels was decreased even one month after surgery, and that was persistent over six months. So there was, there were, there was no recovery. And then other studies followed up, followed up as well. Anyway, so my conclusion is there's a, significant, there's a permanent decline in serum AMH levels after endometrioma excision as we do it. The final marker is the number of oocytes collected. Endometrioma excision versus intact endometrioma, it's not exactly significant, but there's a trend suggesting a further decline. Mean number of oocytes collected is similar, but then could this comparison be biased as while the endometrium is in place, maybe we're not, we don't have access to every single follicle. So we may have underestimated the number of oocytes collected from the ovary with the endometrioma. However, when we compare to remove this bias, operated gonad, gonad with the unoperated gonad, which is healthy, so there's still a significant decline which is higher than the former comparison. Again. I think there's a strong trend towards decreased AFC, antral follicle count. There's, there's, I mean, I think the data strongly shows, without doubt, that serum AMH is permanently decreased, and mean number of oocytes collected is also significantly decreased compared to the contralateral gonad after surgery. So, how can we improve, basically, if we are not doing, you know, much good with surgery? If we are, I mean, affecting more harm than benefit. So which could, what could be the factors affecting the, um, determining the harm associated with surgery? There are several studies investigating effect of different variables. Age by itself doesn't seem to affect, I mean, um, modulate the effect of surgery. Based on most studies, bilateral endometrioma excision is associated with, a, I mean, more harm than unilateral endometriomas. If a woman has a high preoperative AMH levels to start with, she experiences a higher rate of loss, but regardless, she may end up with a better outcome with, I mean, absolute higher absolute levels. But that suggests there is some harm to the ovary systematically, either by circulation or by electrocautery, whatever. So the, the, the more healthy ovary is harmed by surgery, the higher the rate of loss. Cyst size doesn't seem to be related. In our two studies, what we did was we examined the surgical specimen and counted the antral follicles, the healthy ovarian tissue that was inadvertently removed in some cases. So that could have been a marker of ovarian, uh, loss of ovarian reserve, but we didn't find it, I mean, 
to significantly affect the rate of loss. It might be a statistical issue, or you know, it's really small, so maybe it's not the cause. It's not, it's not you know, if you take out a small piece of, I mean, really a tiny piece of ovary. But what we found is basically in another meta-analysis, combining six studies, the hemostatic method you use after endo laparoscopic endometrioma excision is a strong determinant of harm. So what I mean is you, you, you know, the most commonly used technique is bipolar cauterization after removal of the cyst. The cyst bed is cauterized. Alternatives are suturing the cyst bed or application of hemostatic sealants. There are several studies we'll discuss tomorrow um, that compare the, the rate of loss in the AMH levels following these different hemostatic methods after laparoscopic endometrioma excision. When we combine them in a meta-analysis, what you find is actually bipolar cauterization is the most harmful method. It is associated with a significantly higher loss of AMH, I mean decline in serum AMH levels. So I would say, even if you do endometrioma excision, try to cautiously use the cautery or try to use alternative methods. And so my conclusions are endometrioma per se is associated with a decrease, decrease in ovarian reserve with all markers. Laparoscopic endometrioma excision causes a further decline and the de this decline after surgery seems to be permanent and cauterization may be a major determinant. Thank you for your attention.